On this third for your response question for your unit 7, we're given a differential equation. Do y dx equals xy cubed. And we are asked to draw the slope field for the nine points indicated. So I have nine dots. So for each one of these ordered pairs, I'm going to plug in the x-coordinate for x and the y-coordinate for y. And then just draw a little line that represents that slope. So this is multiplying the x and y cubed. So if x or y are zero, then I know my slope is zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take care of all of those slopes. So I know on the axes, the x and y axis, that um, I have zero slopes. So I just draw little horizontal slopes. So um, the others, I'm going to have to multiply the x times the y cubed. So I'm just gonna start at the top left. The x is negative 1 and the y is 1. So negative 1 times 1 cubed is negative 1. All right, um, let me move to the um, right. So my x and y are both 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Positive 1 slope. All right, and then um, for the third quadrant, the x and the y are both negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 cubed is going to be positive 1 because negative 1 cubed is still negative 1. And then fourth quadrant, it's 1 times negative 1 cubed, which is going to be negative 1. Okay, so on this one, um, the directions say you get one point for getting all the zero slopes right and one point for getting the other, so a two-point question. All right, we're going to find the second derivative on this one and determine the concavity of all the solutions of the differential equation in quadrant four. All right, so... We are going to use the product rule. So I'm going to leave the first factor alone, x, multiplied by the derivative of the second, which is going to be 3y squared dy dx. All right, and then for the second, or plus, we're going to leave the second one alone and multiply by the derivative of the first, which is just 1. Okay. So then, in the place of dy over dx, I'm going to put in what it equals. Let's see how this goes. So it's 3xy squared times xy cubed. Alright, and then I'll just multiply. So 3x squared y to the fifth plus y cubed. Okay, so now, I wrote that kind of weird in the answer, but it's, it's fine, it doesn't matter. All right, so now I am going to figure out what's going on in quadrant four. So Everywhere in quadrant four, the x is positive and the y is negative. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna plug in positives for the x's and negatives for the y's and just see what happens. All right, so three is three no matter what. Um, when I plug in uh, anything to x, I'm going to get a positive. So a positive squared is a positive. And then when I plug in a negative for the y, a negative to an odd power is still going to be a negative. And then same thing here, a negative to odd power is going to be a negative. So this is going to be a negative plus a negative, which is definitely a negative. And that means that in quadrant four, the second derivative is always going to be negative. So d2y dx2 is less than 0 in quadrant 4. All solution curves in quadrant 
quadrant four are concave down. Okay, and then for C, um, we're gonna solve it for our initial condition two, or yeah, the point is two, negative one. Okay, so here we go again. Let's separate the variables. All right, and then because that y has a power, we are gonna do the natural log. We're gonna bump it up and make it a negative power and then we'll integrate. Okay, so I'll take one, oh no, no, no. I'm gonna add one to the power and divide by the new power. Same thing here. Okay, then I'm ready to use the initial condition. Okay, so the y I'm putting in is negative one and the x is two. I'm gonna go ahead and do it that way because y to the negative two is y squared on the bottom. All right, so that's gonna be negative one half and then that's gonna be four times one half is two. And then when I subtract two, I'm gonna get negative five halves is C. All right, and then I'll put it right back in. Um, I'm also gonna rewrite this a little bit. So it's gonna be negative one over two y squared equals one half x squared minus five. do this a little different than I did before. I'm just going to go ahead and, well, no, let's just leave it like this. Okay, so this is going to be negative 1 over 2y squared. That's going to be x squared minus 5 over 2. So what I can do is just flip it. So because these are both fractions, I almost got rid of it, but it's, I think it's going to be better. If it, because these are both fractions, I can just flip it both sides. And then I can multiply by the negative 2. <laughs> what am I doing? Sorry, 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 sorry. I can divide by the negative 2. y squared, that's so going to be negative 1 over x squared minus 5, and then take the square root. Now, you guys know that when we solve equations by taking the square root, we do positive or negative, but there's only going to be one answer. It's either going to be the positive square root or the negative square root. So this is where we look at that initial condition. We need to be able to plug 2 in for our x, and we want to get um, we want to get negative 1. The only way we can get that is if it's the negative square root. So if I put that 2 in there, that's going to be 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. And then negative 1 over negative 1 is positive 1. And so I want to get that the negative square root. This is it. You should be able to put in your initial condition and get